and welcome if you've not been before and welcome back if you have and really nice to see you again um, I'm Zena and I'm the face of From the She Shed France today I'm going to be cooking and I'm going to be making a Devonshire apple cake um, what you can find if you look online is that there's lots of different versions there's the Somerset apple cake the Dorset apple cake the Devonshire apple cake since I've spent most of my life in Devon, I make the Devonshire apple cake. Um, also, as you may or may not have gathered before, I'm gluten intolerant. And so um, I actually am going to make this gluten free. So this is going to be gluten free apple cake. And I'm going to serve it with the caramel bear salé that I actually uh, showed the recipe of last week. But I'm going to do a re quick recap again today. So I've got all my ingredients here. Remember, as always, I will put the ingredients and the recipe in the box below. So don't worry too much at this stage. You'll see I've got gluten-free flour. Ludicrously expensive here in France. If you're buying it in the UK, I think Asda's about the cheapest. Asda's own is currently selling for 90 pence a kilo. This was five euros, 70 something a kilo. Um, I've got my apples, sugar, margarine, egg, salt, cinnamon, some baking powder and some xanthan gum. Now for years I was terrified of a recipe that said xanthan gum because I thought it was going to be some horrendous sticky mess. But actually what you can see is it's just like a baking powder and it's something that you add. Now even though this says that it's a gluten-free mix, I will add those extra ingredients in and I'll tell you that as we go along. I'm starting by weighing some of my dry ingredients and putting in, them into the bowl. So I need 225 grams of my flour. And I'm nearly there. Okay, 225 grams, that's going in. I need a good pinch of salt. Sea salt, as always, you, those of you who have seen me cook before will know that that's by far and away my favourite. So, a good teaspoon of sea salt. I am going to be putting in a teaspoon of baking powder. Because it's gluten free, you just need those things to help things rise and the xanthan gum, which I'm going to put in as well, he helps hold everything together. Gluten is a binding agent and so when you're using a flour that hasn't got a binding agent in it, it tends to crumble more. So uh, given I've got 225 grams of uh, flour, a teaspoon of xanthan gum should be plenty. Now, the some of the recipes will tell you to add the sugar at this stage. Now, given we're going to be doing rubbing in method, no, I don't want to be having grindy bits of sugar between my fingers. So, two teaspoons of cinnamon gives it a lovely flavour. And I'm just going to give that a quick a bit of a mix by hand there and now I'm going to weigh my margarine which I need a hundred grams of you can use butter or margarine for this recipe I'm just using margarine for my caramel bear salad I will definitely be using butter um, and then I'm going to show you how to do the rubbing in method something lots of people are frightened of but actually is really quite easy so I've weighed my margarine, I've got 100 grams. I'm gonna put that into my flour. Um, it's often worth giving it a bit of a chop to start with with a knife, particularly if you're using a more solid margarine. This one doesn't really need it, but I'm just gonna do it to give you an idea. And then when I've done that, I'm gonna start the rubbing in method. Now, I think it's the, one of the easiest ways of baking lots of people don't like it because I think they become feared of it it's the way in which you make pastry now what you'll see is that I'm really just using my thumb 
and the tips of my finger. So I'm not squidging anything. What I'm doing is lightly lifting it up in the air and just rubbing it between my thumbs and my tips of my fingers. And within a very short period of time, this will start to look like fine breadcrumbs. So you can see it's really starting to turn into the fine breadcrumbs now. Still got some largish lumps, but it's really just a case of patience and just keep going. And you will get there before you know it. Whilst you've got lumps, you've got to keep going back and doing it. Don't think that uh, they won't matter. They will matter. But it won't take long. Just keep lifting it up, giving it a light rub. As you get close to finishing, you will see the larger lumps that you haven't actually yet rubbed in. And just concentrate on them. It's not going to be a problem, but don't squidge them. You've just got to keep doing this light lifting, rubbing and dropping it, for want of a better word. Um, and as you do that, you are mixing everything together. Your flour and your margarine will be coming together very nicely and the mixture will start to, they always say it resembles fine breadcrumbs, I'm not certain that it does really, um, I think breadcrumbs look a bit different to this but I think you get the idea and you, once you've seen what it should look like when it's rubbed in, actually you soon start to know whether something's right or not. So I can still find the odd lump. So I'm just going through now, looking for them to actually make sure that I have got everything mixed in or rubbed in as I would like it to be. Now, I'm quite happy with how that looks. So I'm going to move on to the next stage. So now I've got my uh, rub rubbed in flour and margarine. I'm just weighing out my sugar, which I need 100 grams of. And unfortunately, it's in a bag, type of bag that it's not very easy for it to come out of, but never mind. We'll get there in a moment. Mm, nearly that, nearly that, nearly that. That's about 100 grams. And I'm just going to put that straight in to my breadcrumb mixture or my flour and margarine mixture. I'm going to give that a quick stir. I'm using a wooden spoon. Sometimes I just do that by hand. But given that I'm going to, in a moment, uh, add my apples and my egg that I'm going to beat, um, I'm just going to mix it with a spoon. So the next thing you do at this stage is you need to peel, core and chop your apples. So I literally get a sharp knife. Oh, sorry, there should be about 350 grams of these apples. But as I said, I will put all of that information in the box below. 
so don't worry too much you can use whatever apples you've got to hand uh, some recipes tell you to use cooking apples um, I will use whatever I've got and in this instance these were windfalls from someone's garden and, um, and in fact nobody's quite sure if they are cooking apples or eating apples I would say they are a fairly sour eating apple but it really doesn't matter and you literally you're going to peel them core them and roughly chop them Okay, so my apples are now chopped, peeled, cored and chopped and put them in to my bowl and try not to throw them across the work surface as I've just done but in the bowl I'm going to take my egg and I'm going to crack it into a cup and I'm going to give it a beat, I want a beaten egg. nicely beaten and that's now going into my mixture and the whole lot is going to be fairly quickly brought together. You do need to at this point give it a bit, a bit of a stir because you do want it to hold together. So. Some people like to add more egg than that. Some people add a bit of milk at this stage. I think my batter is a bit dry and that was quite a small egg. So I, what I am going to do is add a second egg. So I am cracking a second egg into my cup. Again, I'm gonna give it a good beat. Thoroughly mixed, pour it in, whoops, throw everything in every direction, give this a bit more of a stir. And I can already see that's making my batter just that little bit wetter. Don't be afraid if you think it doesn't look as though it's going to hold together to add, you can add another egg or you can add a bit of milk, whichever you've got to hand. Uh, whichever you prefer really um, and so now I can see that that is holding together really nicely so I have already greased a dish a um, lovely Breton dish that I um, got in a charity shop locally but you can see I've well and truly given it a good coating in margarine which is what you need to make sure your cake doesn't stick so I'm now going to put my batter into there. And I am going to grab myself a spatula because I just think I could do one. Well, it doesn't look particularly clean. I shall have another one. I'm going to grab a spatula to get the remains of the batter out of the dish and into my cooking container. Now I'm going to use my wooden spoon just to flatten the batter so that it's just sitting down into my dish. It 
Here's a bit sticky. Use whatever you've got to hand, knife, the fork you've beaten your egg with, whatever, just to help get things off the wooden spoon, smoothed down nicely. And I want it reasonably even across the dish, which isn't so easy because of the fact that you've got the apple chunks in. So try to make sure that dish out of the way, give myself a bit more space. Uh, make sure that you're pushing them around a bit so that they are reasonably even, evenly distributed. Now, some people at this stage put some sugar over the top of it before it goes in the oven to cook. Now, given I'm going to serve it with the caramel bear salad, which is actually very sweet, I'm not going to do that on this occasion. So, I have preheated my oven to 190 degrees, and this is now going to go in the oven for 30 minutes in the middle of the oven. So my apple cake has just come out of the oven. You can see it's looking really good, nice and brown on the top. It's risen up slightly, which is just what we want. I'm gonna leave it now for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to slice it and serve it with some caramel sauce. You can see now that it's happening quite quickly. There is uh, still some crystals in there, still some solid bits of sugar, but you can see that more of it is liquid than is solid. I'm just going to keep stirring it for a minute and um, what you'll see is now I've still got some solid there, I've got to let that melt but it won't be long. Once it's melted, in just a moment or two, comes the next bit which is probably the trickiest bit of the lot because as you add the butter, what tends to happen is that the sugar will start to solidify because of the fact that you are adding something that is colder. Um, so what you have to do at this stage is turn the heat right up. So you can see that my sugar is mostly melted. I've still got some bits stuck on the side of the pan and I am going to just let them release. I'm now going to put my, my temperature right up and I've got my 40 grams of butter and I'm just dropping that straight in. Now you can hear that it is going to burp, but don't worry, just stir like mad. You've got to really beat it at this stage. It will be fine. It doesn't seem like it, but it will be. The butter has melted. I'm now gonna add the, sh the cream. I've got 20 centilitres of cream as per the recipe. I will put that again below. And as you can see, you do need to do lots of stirring at this stage to make sure that it doesn't go lumpy. But it doesn't, and I can start to turn the temperature back down again now. And I'm just gonna let it cook just for a couple of minutes just to thicken slightly and you can see that all my cream and my butter have actually gone in to the caramel bear salad and that to me is cooked so I'm going to take that off the heat and put it in a jug ready to serve with the apple cake when that's cooked. So you can see I've given it 10 minutes. I've taken a slice out. I'm rather excited now. I'm going to put a little bit of caramel sauce on the top. Um, and that is rather an exciting plate of gluten free Devonshire apple cake with caramel bear salad. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like. Think about subscribing, following the channel, and remember, ring that bell, and that way you'll know every time I upload a new video. Thank you for watching. See you again soon.